So the next step is to actually align our thinking particles emitter to a spline. So I'm going to come into my front perspective and I'm going to select the Bezier spline tool and I'm just going to draw just a nice wiggly line. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just an example to show you. So this could be useful for, for example, if you're, you maybe have an intro or something and you could set this spline and you could have some particles that fly around your intro or something along those lines. So it could be cool for maybe a particle reveal on a logo or something like that. But I'll leave that up to you. So now we have our spline object and we come back into our perspective view. You can see we have this nice wiggly spline object now. Now what we want to do is select both our thinking particles emitter and our wind. And we're going to want to rotate this to 90 degrees. Ninety degrees, like so. And if we hit preview now, you can see we're getting there. But what we need to do is actually align and animate the the null to the spline object. So we can do that if we select our emitter, right click Cinema 4D tags, and the second one down is the align to spline. And now we have to define the spl the spline that we want to animate along so all you have to do is drag the spline into the spline path like so and you can see that basically attaches the null object to the spline and if we hit position and we change the position value you can actually see that we can animate along the spline so I'm going to set this to 100% for the position and I'm going to hold down command or control if you're on a Windows computer and add a keyframe to the position and then we're going to move to around 85 frames and we're going to set this to zero hold down control or command and hit the keyframe button again And if we preview now, we have our thinking particles being aligned to the spline. Now there's one more thing that we could quickly look on before, and that's the P-Storm particles. So basically I want more particles, so we're going to change the shot to 25. So that's going to give us a load more particles like so. It's looking pretty cool. Okay, the next step is to actually, if we just render here, you can see we don't actually see anything and that's because we haven't added any particle geometry yet. So the way to do that is come up to your simulate tab and thinking particles and thinking particles geometry. Now there's a few different ways you can get the thinking particles to show up in the renderer. There's using hair objects, there's also using pyro cluster, and there's also using um, shapes such as spheres, triangles, so all that good stuff. So we're going to use the most simple one which is a sphere. And what we're going to do is change the radius to maybe 10 and the segments down to 15. So what we need to do now is basically say in Expresso that we want the sphere to generate on each individual particle. So we can do that if we right click in the Expresso editor, new node, thinking particles, and we want to come down to TP standard and P shape 
and then what we want to do with that is drag our sphere onto our p-shape node that we just created and then connect that to the p-pass that we have connected the wind to and we're going to need to create a, create a basic texture for this so I'm just going to come in and pick a nice pink colour like so and then what you want to do is all you want to do is pop that newly made material onto the particle geometry and not the actual sphere itself so if we render now you can see that we don't see anything and that is because we haven't defined in the particle geometry we haven't de defined a group so if you remember in our settings we made this pink group so what we're going to need to do is just drag that group over to the geometry and now hopefully when we render we should see some particles yep yeah, there we go even just in the editor you can start to see these particles here so maybe we could do with reducing the segments to maybe about 10 if I just move the original sphere out the way so we can't see it now if we render can see we have actual particles that we can see in the render so that pretty much wraps it up for today's tutorial I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments section below and stay tuned for loads more thinking particles tutorials we've got some fun stuff coming up so stay tuned and i will see you again very soon in another video thanks for watching guys see you later